Okay, hello everyone. Uh, good evening. Uh, so, I had just recently posted on social media uh, that I was going to uh, to do three uh, three videos, uh, kind of tutorials, uh, more of like an, an amalgamation of just kind of um, uh, tricks and tips on how to really uh, break down a face uh, and just kind of transition into uh, building a sketch for either uh, either portraiture or doing caricatures. Uh, so it's kind of going to be a three-step videos where the first one, uh, this one that I'm doing right now, uh, you, we're going to do like a the 2D proportion breakdown. Well, not kind of the, the set in, not set in stone proportions, but what I have kind of gleaned from information of instructors that I've worked with uh, at the Art Institute, as well as stuff that I've looked at online. Uh, and and then just kind of my own trials and tribulations uh, and it's not so much um, uh, that it really needs to be set this way but it's always good to really build your own personal workflow and these are just kind of the the way the way I break down a face uh, so you can tweak these tips and stuff the way that you want to but this is kind of the easiest way that I break it down uh, this is what works for me so we're going to start with uh, 2D proportions, then we're going to go on to uh, taking these 2D proportions, throwing it onto more of a 3D form, uh, so you can actually start to think about how the head is built as a as a as a mass uh, and how it turns and kind of shifts and everything, and how you can actually build shadows and shapes on that uh, to to kind of help you out. And then the third video is taking like a reference photo, or if you're sitting and you're doing caricatures of people that are coming up to you and stuff like that. This is this is things that you can do, kind of tips and tricks and stuff like that, of how you can take these proportions uh, and then kind of bring it into into doing caricatures and kind of thinking that through. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started on the 2D proportions parts, and and above all, uh, everything that that I'm kind of giving you in these videos and everything, like I said, tweak it yourself but it's all about practice. So if this is something that you want to do, you got to sit down and just keep on doing it and keep on doing it. And don't don't ever say failure is not an option. Failure is all about progress. So as many times as you go through this, whatever whatever th ways that you want to tweak it yourself to kind of help you out, that's what's important. It, it's really important to to build that build that workflow for yourself what works best for you. Okay, so starting out here, uh, if you look at a head, uh, it's it's effectively like an oval shape. It's not a perfect oval, uh, not, not a perfect ellipse. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more tapered at the bottom, a little bit thicker at the top. But that's kind of just like a rough idea of it. Uh, and, and everybody has different shapes and stuff like that. Me being Asian, I have a wider head, kind of flatter, wider. Uh, but, but building that, that base... That base oval is is definitely the way to start. So let's put down a base oval, okay? And then take that, that base oval and you're gonna cut it in half vertically, okay? You're gonna come straight through and you're gonna cut it vertically. Uh, and then the bottom half of that, you're gonna cut it vertically, like you're gonna bisect it, go straight in the middle again, and you're gonna cut that vertically. And then th that uh, bottom fourth now, uh, you're also gonna take that and you're gonna split that in half. And the importance of doing that, that first line goes through the center of the eyes, just roughly. Uh, the second line goes through the through the base of the nose, and then the third line goes through the middle of the lips, okay? Uh, and then we're also going to cut it horizontally, okay? We're going to cut it right through the middle horizontally. Uh, and then do, in doing that, uh, we go back to that baseline that goes through the eyes, uh, and then you're going to cut each half of that horizontally again. And then the reason that we have that, because because just kind of if somebody's giving you a deadpan stare, the way I look at it, that's where your pupils would be, like the center of your eyes would be if they're just giving you that deadpan stare. And that's just kind of a rough, a very rough uh, setup for that. Uh, but once you have those pupils set up, you can kind of build an eye around it. And like I said, this is very rough, so... Don't assume that this is the perfect face, uh, but it, it, it's a way to kind of start out. And we, you can go in further uh, with that uh, to, to kind of taper it in because these two corners right here is what you're going to actually bring down 
to build your nose okay because if you actually look at the corner of your eyes it usually comes down to 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 your nostrils right there and it, it kind of builds that out so where these connect down here when you come in down uh, vertically uh, from the corner of the eyes you're going to center it around where the midline crosses with the the base of the known nose line and you're going to make a little oval there because that's going to build the base of your nose right there okay and then for that next line this is where the inner part of the mouth is if you have pursed lips and you're just kind of closing your mouth that's where the the interior of the lips is and then if you come down uh, that top lip comes out bottom lip is rounded right there so the top lip is going to be a little bit uh, smaller than the bottom lip and then for that bottom lip again around the center you're going to create another oval now you can go the same size as the nose or you can go a little bit smaller a little bit bigger just depending if you feel that the the lip is thicker than that and and then the, the wide nose or thinner just dependent just kind of look at the form and shapes of the lips compared to the nose because with that bottom oval if you go to the base of it to create that bottom lip to really create that form you're just going to kind of shade underneath that line so that will give you the effect of the lip and then making a little dip for the top lip you can give some shadow too and that will create that top lip there for you now underneath the lip you can actually uh, you can actually make another oval that's going to create the chin and this can go past the base of your overall oval for your head uh, but this is how you're going to build out uh, the base of that chin and then as we create the rest of the face if you look to the corner of the outside corners of the eyes and you bring those down where it will touch this line that goes through the lips you can make those points so you can come from the chin and come out to that point right there and then create the rest of the head okay and then for the ears normally what you do with your ears is where that line comes out from the corner of the eyes and then also where the line comes out for uh, the base of the nose you can actually create the ears and it goes out a little bit wider on both sides so you make kind of a a semicircle and come out and you create that ear shape on both sides and then on the underside here the way that we can create the neck is going from the center of the eyes come straight down and you can make the form of the neck now depending if if your person's a little bit thinner you can make the neck a little bit thinner if the person's more heavy set you can make it thicker and it's all just kind of tweaking to, to make those adjustments now the other proportion we can talk about is on the top of the head uh, I have a receding hairline so my widow's peak isn't where it used to be uh, but on the top of that head if you have split it on the top that point right there that's where your widow peak would sit okay uh, but there you can come out create kind of a hairline come down to where the ears are and you can create some hair and now we won't really focus on shadowing uh, but obviously if you take this base you start putting some shading into it you can actually start to give the the face some form and this is a very generalized face so it's it's very nondescript but dependent on kind of the things that you built into it you can give it more of a a manly look or a womanly look or even if you uh, are non-gender specific you don't have to necessarily say what the gender is We can build up more of this face.
And if you don't do the shading, I mean, that will keep it from actually having form and then it will still feel very flat. But the more shading that you put into something, it actually gives it more volume and it gives it more proportion and it starts to feel like a real person. And then the other thing that we can put in there is of course eyebrows and now just depending on if you want thin eyebrows or if you want bushy eyebrows you just kind of think about like the person that you're trying to create and make your eyebrows appropriately. lines but that's kind of like the basis like I said we'll go more into shading and stuff when we get to uh, the 3d forms that's just to kind of give you a baseline of what to do and how to look at those proportions so you can kind of quickly uh, kind of map them out uh, as you start to draw ahead and like I said, this is for like more of your nondescript head if you're just kind of drawing something from from imagination uh, and just kind of pulling it out. Those are the kind of base uh, proportions that I work with. Uh, so hopefully this helps. Uh, I will get this one all finished up and posted and then we will go on to the second video where we're actually going to start taking the form using the same base kind of proportions and and kind of building it onto a 3d form and starting to use more shadow and stuff like that so as always don't preach just teach love y'all be seeing you soon in the second video